Welcome to the World Cafe Podcast. This podcast has been designed with curated content that centers on the power of words. Can we really do anything without speaking? Can we really do anything without the agency of words? Yes, that is what this podcast is all about. And I am your host, Amakri Isobwe, your neighborhood word trader. I believe in the power of words, for it is the unit of creation. I trade in words to profit my world. Hello, everybody. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, good everything, wherever you are joining in. Oh, yes, this is the Word Cafe Live Show. How are you doing? How has your day been? Mine has been lovely, fantastic. I've been looking forward to this evening, you know, to share some wonderful moments with you. Mm-hmm. We're still on it. The Future of Work series. Yes, we still have our wonderful, wonderful friend all the way from South Africa, Chadra Kobian, and uh, he'll be joining us very soon. What are we? Yes, the blockchain. But right now, we've moved has grown over the years, you know, and people building, building, building. How are you? How is South Africa today? Uh, brilliant, uh, brilliant. Uh, winter is settling in. The country is transitioning uh, from COVID into retooling and re-emerging. So there's a lot of hope in the air. Mm. We ourselves are working a lot more into Africa. We do 80% of our work a lot more in Africa than in South uh-huh. Africa. So we always have an advantage point. But South Africa is, is brilliant. And, 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 and how's Nigeria? I'm fine. Yes, we have our own challenges here and there, uh, but we are fine. No, that that's brilliant. I'm 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 glad that all is yeah, well. We're in the raining end. season. This is in Nigeria. We'll have yes, yes. Look yes, at all that. Is well, and uh, well, challenges are there. We will rise. Yes, we will rise. We will rise. So so so. I mean, I've been looking forward to this. This I mean, conversation. You know, I shared. Uh, rather, my wife followed our conversation the last time on blockchain and she was wow blown away you know and i told her today shedrack is coming back to talk about entrepreneurship she said wow i'm looking forward to that you know it's one word we all think we know but when you meet the professionals those who practice it those who have hands-on skill and they begin to talk about it you come to see that i am at sea totally at sea on this subject so who is an entrepreneur you know, an entrepreneur is is a is a special breed of a of a human being. Really, it's uh, it can never be born. Uh, entrepreneurs are made. But, so there are those qualities, and I'll just touch on three for the benefit of the viewers and the listeners. Really, uh, I will just touch on three. Firstly, real entrepreneurship means that you've got a starting power, meaning. Uh, there's something that separates you from those that think about things uh, that are hypnotized by a variety of hypotheses. They always talk mm-hmm. about one day I'll do this, one day I'll do But they lack the boldness to start. So as an entrepreneurship, you have a starting power. You can go beyond talking about it to doing it. That's number one. The second mm-hmm. pillar for the benefit of the of the of, of the web cafe audiences, the second the second aspect that I want to look at is the staying power. It's one thing to start. It's one mm-hmm. thing to start. It's one thing to have the boldness to start, but do you have the resilience to keep playing even when, when the goalposts are shifting, to stay in the game even when the rainfalls are coming against you. So that resilience, that staying power is what really separates girls from women. That separates men from boys in boys. the interpretation so of course the last but not least this one it breaks my heart because is the is the one pillar that lacks the most in africa 
And that is what I would refer to as the legacy power. Meaning power to go from starting to resilience and staying in the game to actually growing and scaling towards a dominion position in the industry you are in, in the region that you are in. And of course, the globe is your oyster. So this one is lacking the most. If, if You know how when, when children grow up, they say, no, this one uh, has got an iron deficiency or this one has got this other mineral. The one mineral in entrepreneurship or the one the one dietary supplement that is lacking in African entrepreneurship from personal experience I've seen that is the, the ability to transcend your your myopic view your month end and your needs personally and as a family and to to to, to really gear yourself as as a legacy entrepreneur who is solutioning the region solutioning the country and solving what really are the pain points that keep either your industry or your country awake. That is even a more rare breed. So in summary, an entrepreneur is someone who, who to some extent has got these three pillars. Uh, the power to start, that's the starting power. And the staying power, the resilience to keep fighting. Last but not least, this one is really, really, African is a, a dosage of this on another level. The legacy power, meaning the ability to think uh, beyond putting food on your table, but putting food on a thousand tables, putting food on 10,000 tables, because your vision carries households with it. Your vision carries the hope of your country with it. So that, in a nutshell, is really the classification or the typical uh, element or the foundation that makes up a real entrepreneur. Now, you, you just the last point you made, the legacy power, you know, building yeah. on staying and starting and all that, the legacy power, more or less by continuity, uh, yeah. going the whole stretch. Yeah. How do we, how do we break that cycle, you know, as Africans? How do we indeed get into that legacy mode? Having uh, conquered, having yeah. conquered, starting, staying, yes. and now that point of longevity yeah. that's brilliant you know you've asked such a such a brilliant question it almost makes me emotional and why it makes me emotional is because i'm going to look away from you a bit and i'm going to address the audiences even though i'm speaking to you and i'm gonna categorize the specific audiences i'm addressing in this forum whether they are listening live or they'll visit they'll check in tomorrow let me start by fathers you know how they say the fish it rots at the head let me i'm a father i'm gonna start by addressing fathers Dear African fathers, and if the world is listening, great, but I'm talking to African fathers. Dear African fathers, time has expired for you to continue being distrusting towards your wife. Because if your wife is not your strategic partner in your business legacy formation, perhaps your legacy may not outlive you. Let me leave the wife department in a moment, you know. This distrust, this tension of, oh, she might poison me for my money. Oh, she might do this. Did you marry the enemy? So, dear African fathers Mm. who are in business, you need to up your trust levels. You need to really find a way to, to really the quagmire of distrust in your home. You need to resolve that because you can never hire strangers to work on producing your legacy if you still have trouble in paradise or trouble in home, number one. Number two, dear African fathers, it's time if you really want your name to live on, it's time to trust your daughters. It's time for you to stop being biased and say, oh, the boys, the boys have got my legacy. No, it's not the boys that are qualified through the male gene. It is those that are able to catch your vision, whether it be a boy in your household or a girl. Not... Do not, do not award the CEO ship or the continuity of the legacy to maybe, oh, this boy is my favorite. No. Does he embody your vision? Is he set on fire by why you started the company and where, where the company can go next? 
I'll give an example. The the MSs, the MR brand. Uh, there's Louis Vuitton in the luxury uh-huh. space. And there, then there is, the, then there is, the, the, there's the Hermes that actually make uh, bags, luxury bag, the Birken, the, the Birken bag and stuff. They started firstly by making horse saddle. Now I think they've been around for close to 300 years now because they are older than Louis Vuitton. How is it that they got a 300 year legacy? It's because of continuity. There was a time in the life of Hermes where Hermes, which is spelled H E R M E. That's Hermé. When Hermé uh, uh, leaders made a very crazy decision, they always kept it in a family. They always they always passed on the baton to somebody who carried Hermé's surname. But once in the life of Hermé, it was actually the son-in-law who actually understood the Hermé vision more than more than those that are born in the household. So not only had the visionaries had to look beyond the household or look beyond the male species of the household but they actually had to uh, welcome somebody else who was not born in the household because the, the the interest or the preservation of the legacy and the growth of the vision necessitated that it be a, a, they put a capable pilot in that cockpit who really understood the, the potential of the brand and its continuity that's one however they reached a compromise they told him they will actually allow him to take over the Hermès brand to the next level on condition that he changes his surname to becoming an Hermé. So it's a very interesting <laughs> thing that happened. And look, India, India and Japan are two destinations that actually they've mastered this legacy thing. There is a hotel in, in, in Japan. I think there's, there's a particular hotel that has actually run for about, I, I think if I'm not mistaken, 400 years. The same hotel has been around. So, and in India, the, 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 the Ambani group, there's quite a number of family owned entities in India that have actually, uh, uh, I mean, the Tata group, the Tata company the Tata. has actually yeah. lived close to 10, if not more generations. At some point, one of these uh, 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 heirs to the, to the legacy was actually not from the household, but was from, was actually from, was actually a cousin. So a cousin had to take over the legacy. So when I address fathers and say, time has come for you to not be biased. You need to put on your business hat and make a business decision. Whether it's a son-in-law, whether it's your own daughter, or whether it's a total stranger. If it is in the best interest of the legacy and the staying power, not of you, but of actually your family name and actually the vision, then make some practical, critical decisions. Of course, I'm going to say, dear moms, if you are a single mother out there and you have an aspiration to raise entrepreneurial children, don't talk to them to say mama, dada, gugu, gaga. Talk to them like they are real men because when they get out there in the world, they're going to have to roar like lions. So if you are a mom and you are looking after children that are boys, don't don't actually uh, treat them with cotton wool because out there, real entrepreneurs are resilient. And we look to you, mom. We look to you, single mom, to build resilience into these kids. There is no inter- school of entrepreneurship or MBA program that teaches resilience. They all teach theory. So it's on the home front that resilience must, like an injection, actually be passed into the system. So moms, don't apologize. These young lions must roar and dads don't be biased and spouses don't shoot down don't shoot down one another support one another if one or two of you are going into business the world is already full of big bad wolves uh, the, 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 the hubby or the, or the wife who is in business they want to come home to a safe environment so legacy requires a non-biased decision making requires boldness even from a young age and requires some really key legacy continuity decisions and um, in africa that's a deficit because we we, we run a lot of sustenance economies 20 only 20 percent of our farms in africa are actually commercializable then we are busy eating our seed in africa so we don't have entrepreneurial farmers but in germany they do in netherlands they do in the u.s both you, you can't separate the farmer from the entrepreneur both are one but in africa 
we know the farmer is also the consumer and the farmer is more a consumer than the entrepreneur so they live hand to mouth they they, they like the business acumen to actually not see a, a, a two hectares of land but to see a, a commercializable blank page wonderful now two things kept coming in your submission vision and resilience vision and resilience now my understanding of vision you must write it down you must articulate it you must put it in such a way that uh, another person can read it have an understanding of it and yeah. run with it permit me because I'm a believer I'm a Christian and Austin, from, yeah, same, from scripture same. standpoint exactly this is how I mean vision is explained to us so I mean how do we as Africans get it in well I mean articulating it properly effectively so that whoever sees it understands it and can run with it very very good question uh, vision exists in order to serve an organization or okay. organizations so for me that's a departure point and I totally resonate with you when you say it must be written down the, 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 the starting power means the departure point is to articulate map it and just be bold enough to transcend it between your head or your heart onto paper that I resonate with you, uh, uh, my brother I resonate with you. excuse me where I want to challenge my fellow visionaries and my fellow entrepreneurs and my fellow entrepreneur hopefuls and my fellow and um, in corporate I want to start something on the side whichever entry point you want to come into entrepreneurship a vision exists to serve an organization in the making or an organization that's on a growth party why am i starting with that i'm starting with that because the word organization is actually derived if you are to look at its etymology it actually mm-hmm. derived from another word that is an organism and hence in in, in 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 business we've got something called an organogram an organogram is a charting of this is a structural leadership an organism is actually a living thing and therefore an organization requires a vision that can fuel it much like how blood circulates in my body so if your vision is not powering your organization then it's definitely suffocating it before it even arises out of the ground so mm. write it down but make sure that your vision the way you articulated it it can number one withstand some rigorous rigorous scrutiny and attack and sometimes i think it was wise solomon uh, that said that better the punches from a friend than the than the gentle sweet words from an enemy so make it a habit uh, dear entrepreneurs to write your vision after you write it before anyone runs with it before you even share it with your board or with your co-founder go and share it with a friend who can play the devil's advocate okay. they must tear it apart they must shred it if it can still remain standing then yours is a vision that will stand the test of time yours is a vision that will breathe life into your organi- organization even as it is even as it is awaking like a giant so make sure that your vision has got the type of uh, white and red blood cells the type of uh, you know the blood system is a delivery it's a delivery yeah. system if your vision is blood does it carry oxygen If your vision is blood does it carry a uh, uh, fighting soldiers with it if your vision is the life blood of your organization is it itself a living a living thing so if your vision is not living and has not been sh- uh, attempted to be shredded by someone you trust in your inner circle what's going to happen is that a vision that's not alive is actually not going to give birth to an organization that is alive a true vision is contagious a true vision is stubborn a true vision brings clarity to those that read about it on social media or oh, amakre said that words are a unit of creation and he wants to actually make sure that words uh, 
are revisited as, 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 as the critical bedrock of all things that we make. And he hosts Wet Cafe and he hosts Astute Leaders. You know what? Uh, this vision is contagious. If I'm a parliamentarian, I need to tune in. If I'm a, a, a if I'm a member of the legislature or, 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 or actually a lawmaker, I need to tune in because words are part of my trade. If I'm an entrepreneur, I need to tune in. If I'm a tech startup founder, I must tune in. So vision is contagious. And when vision is articulated and is bold enough, it will be like a lighthouse. It will invite uh, ships that are sailing from near and far. Awesome. You, you, you just took us to the next question the place of the government in fueling entrepreneur i mean entrepreneurship within yes the economy in africa in our countries what's the place of yes. the government you know very very incredible question that you asked there and just a bit of background i had uh, among the meetings that i had today was a session convened with some executives across nigeria across canada and the us as well and we looked at the patterns the patterns that uh, governments around the world the, 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 their roles and their strategy and how their macro vision is either supporting or suffocating the the micro movement parts which is the entrepreneurs or or the or, or the businesses in their landscape and and by far america uh, your, your your viewers may agree that uh, one of them actually uh, uh, made a comment to say america is more america is more a business landscape than it is a country because oh. if you look at how diverse america is i mean my former neighbor elon musk at some point he was uh, he was um, among america i mean he was a number one richest in america now he's number three because thanks to jeff bezos and another man who's in high-end fashion uh, uh bernard arno of louis vuitton but he oh. is holding spot among the top three so the land of possibility it doesn't have to be america I repeat, the land of possibility doesn't have to be America. It can be any country whose vision is so clear and whose priority is to support its human capital. So if, if a government is aloof and does not actually prioritize the, the, the reskilling and the upskilling of its people, then that environment is going to be a harsh terrain. It's going to be hostile. It's going to be toxic to entrepreneurship instead of supporting, stimulating, and scaling entrepreneurship. But with all that being said, what can you expect as an entrepreneur from a government? There are programs in whatever specific country or territory that exist that can really help to evolve you from one day I will start a business to this is the day. So from concept to starting, there are some programs. Don't get your hopes high. Those programs are, may not make you a dollar millionaire. Those programs may not uh, 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 apply a magic wand. But if you lean forward, and some of those programs, I admit, I, I'm in Africa. Some of those programs are plagued with corruption, but they exist. And there is some level of separating the meat from the bone. So look away from the corruption look away from the negativity, look away from the deficiencies or the shortcomings of the program. Take what they offer you. If there's a funding program, if there's an entrepreneurial support in the government side, take it. Entrepreneurs have an ability like Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods became the world's number one because on the, I mean, on the field, he could block out the naysayers. He could block out the racism. So entrepreneurs, get out there and plug into government programs Block out the noise of corruption. Block out the noise of, oh, son of man, can these bones live? I mean, that's a code of, can I really get help from a government? That's number one. Two, great if you get funding. But I'll actually manage my expectations carefully. I would look more for uh, entrepreneurial research support. Uh, 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 what do you call it? Whatever research that the government is availing, funding, you know, it's so so. It depends on your region. There are some, yeah. some there are some countries that are great in funding their entrepreneurs. Then there are those countries that go like, we'll give you a library of of knowledge. The last but not least, the government avails, whether directly or indirectly, some 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 mechanism. There's something called ease of doing business. Ease of doing business. 
yeah. from from how long it takes to register your company and legitimize it to how I mean entrepreneurs need to actually think like lawyers at times and then think like bankers and then think like consumers. You need to think like a banker because how quickly can you run your business from a zero balance sheet to uh, maybe making 50 million US dollars whereby bankers are the ones that are knocking on your door. Think like a banker. Think what are bankers looking for to actually scale me from 20 million US dollars to 200 million US dollars. You can never. Jack Ma said it. Jack Ma of China, Alibaba, said the moment you find yourself with 100 million US dollars, it's no longer your money. It's other people's money. It's either the money that came from the bank or it's money that came from funders. So early on, don't just look to the government. Look to the government to give you a library, a library of excellence. But manage your expectations. Don't expect funding that much, especially in Africa. This is the disclaimer for Africa. So our <laughs> brothers and sisters that are out in the diaspora, yeah. maybe they are floating money they must send us some but in africa Mm -hmm. look for knowledge look for belonging look for ecosystems that will cause your ear to come within within earshot of some great great assets in terms of what you hear but think like a banker think like a venture capitalist think like an angel even though you are alone think what will an angel investor look for in my business? Therefore, I'm going to build it in. Uh, from day one, even before I make my first thousand US dollars, I must keep stringent record. I must be my own board. I must be my own chairman. I must be my own regulator. That is what grows legacy entrepreneurs. Not, oh no, I'm going to wing it. If I make a thousand US dollars, I'm going to chop the money. I'm going to I'm, I'm, I'm gonna finish the 800 US dollars. No, 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 no. You need to be accountable to your vision. You need to serve your vision as your vision serves your organization, as your organization serves your country. That's what it's about, it's country. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hello, nerds. Come listen to the History Nerd United podcast, and let's make history fun again. We interview today's best authors, whether they are established Pulitzer Prize winners or someone debuting their first book. Let us show you that history is not a boring class you took in high school, but a place where the best stories come from. And we don't just cover history. We also love to chat about true crime, biographies, memoirs, and so much more. So head on over to History Nerds United, and let us introduce you to your new favorite book and learn the story behind the story. History. Now, the place of collaboration, because uh, you just snowballed into it. Because I, I, I've come to realize, you know, in the West, when you look at the way they do business, most yeah. of them, you have this collaboration, this collaborative atmosphere. You know, you find out that a design or a cloth maker does not necessarily have to do the buttons, does not necessarily have to do the zip or the zipper, I beg your pardon, and all that. So you have this, you know, integrated atmosphere of collaboration. Do we see that in Africa? And if we don't, how do we, uh, how do we, should I say, grow it? Brilliant question. There are two, there are, there are, there are three, there are three types of creatures that come to mind. Those are not humans. I've got the bee, I've got the ant, I've got the eagle. Now, whilst the eagle is known for its majestic qualities of leadership, the eagle sometimes is not the most collaborative of, 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 of creatures. For you to really be soaked into collaboration, you might have to you might have to observe a bee. The, the, you know, the, the bees have got a social contract with the queen bee, and then they've got a social contract with the guardians, the guardians of 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 of, of, of the beehive. There's those guardians at the entrance. And then bees have got a social contract with those that go out there to go and bring in a a residue from pollination. And those that go out there, they've got a social contract with the trees because last time I checked, trees don't walk. So trees, they actually uh, do their marketing very well. Trees trees are great marketers. They they choose the 
have flowers that they're going to put out in order to attract the right pollinators. So if a tree wants to be pollinated or wants its seed or its legacy to be carried by a certain bird, that tree over the years would have done its study on what kind of a bird do I want to carry my seed to faraway lands, you see? So there's a social contract that exists. And if it's a bee, then that tree is going to have a market landscape awareness. It's going to have a competitive landscape to realize that, wait, I'm actually a tree that is on the path of the bees that can transport my pollen. So right then and then, a tree has got a tactical awareness and it's going to produce the kind of nectar that's going to keep the market coming. It's going to put the nectar out there, put the color out there, and the bees are going to come. The bees are going to come there and in their drones and as they lift, they'll be lifting with the pollen, some for the queen to make the honey, but others, they'll be scattered on the path. It's an interesting social contract that is immersed and that is the embodiment of collaboration. Here's what's scary about Africa. We are not so collaborative in business and here's the scary part. We are not so collaborative in our marriages. You see, so there is this toxicity that exists where every man for himself, you know, if I oh. if I get an oil deal in Nigeria, I'm not going to ask why is it that the, the crude oil is exported and the petrol is imported at four to ten times the price. I won't ask. I'm fine. If I'm in South Africa and I get what's called a tender or a contract to the government, I'm not going to ask, wait a minute, why does it cost 10 times than what it should cost to actually bring a plate of food to a school child where else uh, if if we brought the cost down and brought cost efficiencies and we collaborated with the farmers we could feed a thousand schools instead of just a hundred schools so that collaboration is not so much what we do in business collaboration is our lifestyle it ought to be our lifestyle that's the only time it can be authentic that's the only time it can be scaled let me give you an example uh, uh, my, my Indian and Pakistani brothers that are in South Africa if um, yeah. if I'm Akran myself or any of your audiences go to them and say listen man I brought my phone for you to fix it and while you're fixing it I'm thinking tomorrow I need to buy a car do, do, do you maybe sell a car what, what will the Indian brother say? They'll say, oh, you want a car? No problem. Wait, wait, let me take my phone. I call my cousin who actually knows another cousin. And then the phone calls are going to be running in the family. That's collaboration. It's unscripted. It's unofficial, but it, it lives in the blood, meaning the qualities of collaboration that Africa must attend to because we are, we are people whom uh, the, the cradle of humanity is here in Africa. So we need to return to humanity where I am better because you are better not because oh no I'm just going to go out there if you look at the words of uh, Dr. Klaus Schwab who founded World Economic Forum he put together he put together a theory called the, the, the stakeholder theory which supports organizational theory the stakeholder theory says the business of business should be to support the stakeholders around it. If that is a business of business, how much more human being? How can I, how can I, in, in, in me wearing the head of Coronet Blockchain, how can I support the featherment of, 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 I mean, the furtherance of Wet Cafe? How can I support some of the audiences that are listening now that will lean forward and say, Amakre, we want to hear more. And we're thinking, oh, Amakre is busy changing the world. I'm busy changing the world. We must make time for them and say, this is how we can help you in your journey. So it begins with mm. selflessness. It goes on with generosity. It goes on with the awareness that if trees and bees can be in business and they can have such an effortless, effortless coexistence of continuing the pollination legacy, then maybe human beings we need to do better. Africans, we can do better. <laughs> You just dropped the mic there. That is a mic dropping submission you just did there. You know, I was just listening to the illustration with the bee, you know, and the way you painted the picture, so true, so true. You know, just like what the scripture says, go and learn from the ants. Go and yeah. learn from the ants. So, yeah. so, so, before I let you go, where can we catch you, Shadrach? Where can we catch you? Uh, brilliant, certainly. You know, I am 
my uh, the, the hat that I wear as co-founder of Coronet Blockchain. So www.coronetblockchain.com. Uh, I, I, I mean, uh, that's my company site. There are forms that if you want to get a hold of me, you can slip in a form there. There's an email to reach out there. Hello at coronetblockchain.com. Social media wise, I'm very collaborative. I'm very sociable. I'm very approachable. I am available on Twitter, but I am most active on LinkedIn, which is just my name, Shadrach Kubiani, as seen on the screen here uh, on LinkedIn. If you look that up, I will come up. I would love to connect. Just like how I'm connecting with my brother Amakre there, let's make the circle bigger. Let's grow Africa together and let's grow one another. I can attest to that. Shadrach is, uh, how am I going to describe him? Easy going person. You know, when I met him, the first time I met him, we've not met physically, so to say, but yeah. connecting with him on LinkedIn is like we've seen before. And boom, just like that, that chemistry and the reaction, everything we're seeing now. There's a name I saw recently, Pretty yes. Kobiyan. Yes, yes. Is she your sister? That all is from the same tribe. That very good, very great question. That is my wife of seven years. We are celebrating seven years in marriage this month, and we are co-founders of Coronet Blockchain. We are in business, and we do life business together. The the, the the what I say the similarity is there because I saw her on LinkedIn and somehow I was like, are they related? And I went through her profile and all that. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Congratulations and singing well to her. Oh, Shadrach, I wish you can go on and on and on and on and on. I would not I, am... I would not be half the man I am if it was not for the selflessness, the support, and the wisdom of my wife and business partner, Pretty. Shadrach, you have to bring her on the show. No, yes, I, yes, I, yes. I want her to come and talk to the to, to the oh, yes. to the ladies. Yes, we have to make something. We have to make it happen. I am really? so grateful. I am so I grateful. Make some calls. She will come. Please, please, yes. please, please. She she need to come here and share with the African women. Let's see. Let's celebrate our women also. You know I what will. I'm doing today? What yes. I'm doing today? The World Cafe Live Show was actually inspired by my wife. I must ah. say, yes, I must give her that credit. You know, she inspired it. You know, God used her to like yes. push me into this, you know, and that's to speak of that strength that you mentioned earlier, that collaborative strength amongst us. Whoa. My regards to her. My regards to her. Guys, salutations. Our salutations to Madame Isoboye. Give her our love. <laughs> And tell her we are counting down to seeing her. Yes. Tell her we are Thank counting you. down from the south heading to the west. We'll make an excuse. Wonderful. Extra- to be able Wonderful. To- yes. Wonderful. Great. You know, Great. You, know you, you are still in the you are still in the driving seat. You are driving the discussion. I, myself and the audiences, we are your guests. So so just permit me to to borrow just one moment. There's something I would like to say about Go Africa. Ahead. There's something I want to say about Africa. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. You know, I'm also going to tell the audiences about Wet Cafe. Um, Wet Cafe, I think, is more than a podcast. Uh, I believe Wet Cafe is a, is a voice in season to cause Africa to 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 have our senses return, and for us as Africans to re- to to begin the pilgrimage to go back to respecting the sacredness and the sanctity of our words. Uh, the words we speak to ourselves, excuse me, the words we share in the boardroom and the words we share in the bedroom and the words we speak to our children. When we see our children, do we say, hope of Africa, finish your breakfast now because there are many other breakfasts and dinners that you ought to get up and go and buy. Uh, do, do we talk to our daughters and say, do we tell our daughters, you know what? You are Africa's dream. Inside of you is the hope of Africa. So you go out there and be confident. You go out there and be God-fident. You go out mm. there and be 
because Africa needs you to speak healthily to yourself and for leaders to speak well of one another. I affirm you, you affirm me. That's us using words to build, not for destruction. That's us using words to go like, even though African governments may be in a very dilapidated state, we speak life to our governments. We speak life to our regions. We speak restoration to Africa. Yes, there is a whole lot of things that are amiss, but we speak a future that we want and it will emerge. When discussions like this take place, then it means entrepreneurs on the other side of these discussions are awakening. They are being restored and that's the power of words as a unit, not just for creation, but for restoration. You just made my evening. <laughs> Shadrach, I'm so, so grateful. Guys, we've been listening to Shadrach Kobian. I mean, he calls himself the blockchain baron. Beyond that, he has this wonderful passion for Africa. I mean, entrepreneurship to see Africa rise again. I'm so fortunate doing this with him. Yes, this is the World Cafe Live Show, and I am your host, Amakri Isogoye. I believe in words. Why? Because it is the unit of creation. Shedrak, thank you. Thank you so much. Before I let you go again, because I've said that how many times that I need to say it again, one yes. last word from you before we say our goodbyes. Uh, our African youth, I am going to throw away the word youth as I address you. Our African youth, I don't want to call you youth anymore. Because in 712 Saturdays from today, we will be arriving on the 1st of January 2035, where Africa's population is doubled to 2 billion plus. I don't want to call you African youth. I say, I use my words tenderly. I use my words lovingly. I use my own experience and my own scars lovingly in this moment as I give you my parting words. I won't call you African youth. I'll call you 2035 leaders. Mm. I say it's time for you to emerge because if you don't emerge, then you cannot remain depending on aid for too long. You need to emerge. You need to rise up and move over to trade from aid. Dear African 2035 leaders, like we are making things happen now, start now to make things happen so that when Africa has got 2 billion mouths to feed, you'll be the one doing the feeding. When Africa has got 2 billion problems, you will be availing 2 billion solutions. Dear African 2035 leaders, start leading now so that by the time 2035 comes here, you are in the championships of the leadership league. Thank you kindly. We'll be watching. My brother and I will be watching just like how you're watching us on the Wet Cafe. We'll be watching you in the Cafe of Life to see whether you're using words as a true unit to create the future you want and to create the Africa we are waiting for. Thank you kindly. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Shedrak. Till we come your way again, this yes. is Amakri Isaboye signing off. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome time it has been with you on the World Cafe podcast today. Thank you for being there. You can catch me up on my social media handles, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, all at Amakri Isoboye. Also, you can get copies of my books, A Cocktail of Words, The Color of Words, and my HR notebook on Amazon and on Roving Heights online bookstores. You can also subscribe to my YouTube page at the same address. Yes, till we see you again. Bye for now.